And hello, creators. In this tutorial, I am going to read a short passage from Lord of the Rings in the style of Phil Dr Dragash. And I'm going to read a few passages from chapter three. Three is company is the name of the chapter. And I, I want to kind of help you understand how to record directly into Adobe Audition. So we're going to start by going up to Adobe Audition here. And we're going to go into settings and audio hardware. So this is where you tell Audition what the microphone source is and what your output source is. So I have chose as my input a device called the Scarlett Solo USB. And that just happens to be my audio interface. So this analog microphone is plugged into a digital audio interface, which is talking to my computer. It's changing the signal from analog to digital so that my Mac is happy. And it is showing up here as uh, an input. There are many other inputs here, as you can see, but I want the Scarlett Solo because that's this microphone right here. And the output, uh, I could put that to my Scarlett Solo as well, but because I'm using Ecamm Live, I'm trying to send the audio out to this recording. So that's why I have this set as Ecamm Live uh, app audio. So I'm just gonna click okay. Now, I am going to create a multi-track session, a new uh, Ad Adobe Audition project file. So I'm gonna go here up here to multi-track and I'm gonna call this uh, Lord of the Rings 2. Oh boy, Quincy Public Schools right there. Lord of the Rings, and I'm just gonna put the number two in there and I'm gonna send it to downloads. Uh, my settings are at 44100, 16 bit depth. I'm choosing mono, I could choose stereo, but it's not important right now. I just want you to see how to record into and manipulate a narration. So I'm hitting OK. Now there's my multi-track uh, program right there, project right there. And the th we're going to record on track number one here. So in order to liven this track to receive this microphone, we're going to use this control right here. So we used that the other day. We muted a track. Um, but I'm going to hit the R button, which stands for, you guessed it, record. So now you can see after I hit that button that this microphone is hot. So you can see level coming in there. Now, we're not going to be too concerned with that level meter. It's just letting us know that there's signal coming in. It is kind of guiding us a little bit to the level, but we're, we don't have to mess with that right here or anything like that. So down here in the control playback control panels i can hit this red button and start recording and when i do the track is going to turn red and you're going to see my waveform as i speak so let's do that testing one two three check one two three and i'll hit the stop i could hit spacebar and you can see the track has gone back to its normal color i'll put the playhead here because i'm in time selection tool so I can move that playhead anywhere I want. Testing one, two, three, check. One, two, three, and I'll hit the stop. Okay, I'm happy with that. I'm gonna go into the move tool and hit the, uh, highlight the, the clip in that track and hit the delete button, bye. Okay, so now I'm ready to record. I'm set up so that I have my Kindle uh, reader down here on my Mac and I have chapter three set up. I'm gonna read a few paragraphs. Let's track that. And I'm gonna to try to do the voices and everything the way Phil Dragash does it. So um, don't laugh too hard. You ought to go quietly and you ought to go soon, said Gandalf. Two or three weeks had passed and still Frodo had made no sign of getting ready to go. I know. But it's difficult to do both, he objected. If I just vanish like Bilbo, the tale will be all over the Shire in no time. Of course you mustn't vanish, said Gandalf. That wouldn't do at all. 
I said soon, not instantly. If you can think of any way of slipping out of the Shire without its being generally known, it would be worth a little delay. But you must not delay too long. What about the autumn, on or after our birthday? asked Frodo. I think I could probably make some arrangements by then. To tell the truth, he was very reluctant to start, now that it had come to the point. Bag End seemed a more desirable residence than it had for years, and he wanted to savour as much as he could of his last summer in the Shire. When autumn came, he knew that part at least of his heart would think more kindly of journeying, as it always did in that season. He had indeed privately made up his mind to leave on his fiftieth birthday, Bilbo's 128th. It seemed somehow the proper day on which to set out and follow him. Following Bilbo was uppermost in his mind, and the one thing that made the thought of leaving bearable. He thought as little as possible about the ring and where it might lead him in the end. But he did not tell all his thoughts to Gandalf. What the wizard guessed was always difficult to tell. He looked at Frodo and smiled. Very well, he said. I think that will do. But it must not be any later. I'm getting very anxious. In the meanwhile, do take care. And don't let out any hint of where you are going. And see that Sam Gamgee does not talk. If he does... I really shall turn him into a toad. All right, we'll hit the space bar there. We'll stop that there. And we'll just listen back to parts of this file. I didn't flub up that badly, um, so I don't think there's a ton of edits. You ought to go quietly, and you ought to go soon, said Gandalf. Two or three weeks had passed, and still Frodo had made no sign of getting ready to go. Okay. Uh, let's see. Um, you can see that there are some peaks and valleys here. This is... To go quietly. And you ought to go soon, said Gandalf. And said Gandalf gets really low right there. So let's compress this file. Let's bring up some of the low points and bring down some of the high points and just make it a little bit more level. And the way I'm going to do that is in the waveform editor. I could do it here in multitrack. But I won't see that file, uh, I won't see that waveform here change. And I, and I just, I'm going to do it again in waveform because I want to see that waveform change. And I want you to see that waveform change. I think it's important to get a visual on this. And for some reason, Adobe Audition won't do this in multitrack. So I'm going to go right over to waveform up here. And I'm going to go into effects. Amplitude and Compression, Dynamics, and I have three effects here. I have Auto Gate, Compressor, and Expander. I only want to use the Compressor, so that's why this guy is checked off up here. And I use this quite frequently, so it turns into a custom setting. It stayed at minus 18 dB, and that can be controlled by either doing the uh, moving the dial or just typing in negative 18 on my keyboard. I like the ratio to be at 4. So again, you could select it here, or you could just go in here, click in there, and type in the numeral 4. I don't care about attack or release, and I set my makeup gain at 7. This is probably going to be defaulted to 0 for you, but you're going to want to bring it up to around 7. I can't seem to manipulate that really well, so I'm going to click in there, type in the 7, and I'm going to apply, and we should see this waveform actually physically change. Okay, it did, and I am liking that. Let's go back and look at it in multi-track. Now we should see a change in there. Yeah, okay, so... You ought to go quietly, and you ought to go soon, said Gandalf. And that's a little bit better right there. I'm, I'm happy with that uh, for right now, so... Two or three weeks had passed and still Frodo had made no sign of getting ready to go. I know. So because we compressed this, we brought up some of the lower uh, volume uh, audio, and that includes my mouth noises and breath. So, so gross. 
Now, I'm going to silence that by going up to Clip, Silence, Time Selection, and Selected Clips. So I highlighted that section. Oh, maybe let me back up there a little bit. I'm using the Time Selection tool here. Up in the tool section, it's this guy. It looks like an eye. And I'm and I'm putting the playhead there. And I'm just dragging back. And now I'm hitting the space bar. And I'm hearing that offending noise. And now I'm going to go up to clip, silence, time clip, and selection. And you can see the yellow line came down to, z to nothing, to silence, and came back up no sign of getting ready to go i know but it's di so i silenced that noise now i could go through this whole thing and do that um, there's another way to get out low noises and i'm going to show that in a different video but let's just go up here but so you must big, not delay this big pause is all about way too long and i'm just hitting the space bar to start and stop the playhead yuck what about the all? Okay, so I'm just gonna take this and cut all that. So I'm doing a ripple delete. Now I can do that up here in edit and do this ripple delete. And that is right now I want to delete the time that I've selected in the clip. So I'll hit that. And there is a shortcut for that, by the way. <coughs> And there it is. Too long. What about the autumn, on or after our birthday? Asked Frodo. I think I could probably make some arrangements by then. To tell the truth. And right here, <coughs> excuse me, I have COPD, if I haven't told you before. Um, so if you hear me clap, cough in class, I'm not, I'm not sick. I am sick, but I'm not sick with COVID. Um, let's silence that right there some arrangements by then to tell the truth he was and I think somewhere around here I'm going to add the music bed let's pull in a music bed now I'm let's see can I get my finder window up here yeah let's open a new finder window there we go and if I go into where did I put it music yeah multi-track Gandalf and this piece of music here is called Epic Drama Sleek Car Commercial, and it's a just a, 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 um, a royalty-free music bed that I got from a service that I pay for yearly. I have a yearly subscription to it. It's got a ton of music, every genre, every uh, musical instrument you could think of, every tempo, every style, and it has sound effects too, and it's pretty good. It's Pretty darn good. I mean, if I need a zebra with a head cold in Chicago, I might find it in there. It's a pretty, pretty good amount of effects. Effects. So I'm going to drag this and drop it down into track number two. And let's take a listen. I think I could probably make some arrangements by then. To tell the truth, he was very reluctant to stop. I think I'm going to pull the music in a little bit sooner than that. So let me go up here to Move Tool. Let me grab that track and move it around. Let's see. Where do we want to put that? That wouldn't do at all. I said soon, not instantly. If you can think of any way of slipping out of the Shire without its being generally known, it would be worth a little delay. But you must not delay too long. What about the all? I think I'm going to move it up a bit. And I think I'm going to make a little bit of a gap here, just a tiny bit of a gap, so that the music comes in as Gandalf ends his sentence. And then we know that there's a moment, a dramatic moment. It's supposed to draw the listener in to what's being said next. So it will be worth a little delay, but you must not delay too long. What about the autumn? And then when Frodo starts speaking again, I'm going to duck 
that music bed, drop the volume. It's called ducking. So here on that yellow line, if I, I'll go in a little bit here. It's helpful because I'll drop it right at the right point. So I'm going to create a blue blue point right there and another blue point right here and drop that pretty darn quick. So let's play that back. Delay too long. What about the autumn on or after our birthday? Asked Frodo. I think I could probably make some arrangements by then. To tell the truth, he was very reluctant to start now that it had come to the point. Bag End seemed a more desirable residence than it had for years. Okay, I'm kind of liking that. And um, I chose this track because it it has a nice ending to it. It has a build-up, so it has some, I think it has some percussion. Thought of leaving bearable. He thought as little as possible about the ring and where it might lead him in the end. But he did not tell all his thoughts to Gandalf. What the wizard guessed was always difficult to tell. He looked at Frodo and smiled. Very well, he said. I think that will do. But it must not be any later. I'm getting very anxious. And see that Sam Gamgee does not talk. If he does, I really shall turn him into a toad. I like that. I, I like the way it ends. I don't like that ending breath. It's right in my face. So I'm going to go to clip silence. So I dropped the volume out there at the end. I, I done really that shall turn him into a toad. I actually want this part, if he does, to be at the end over there. So I could move this up, but there are some gaps here. So I'm going to take the razor blade and I'm going to slice right there. And then I'm going to bring this back and move this clip. Now I'm creating a bunch of clips, but I'm going to do this a couple of times just to get I like now maybe that might do it and see that Sam Gamgee does not talk if he does I really shall turn him into a toad yeah 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 that's perfect okay I really like that so the music is supposed to enhance the story evoke emotion uh, underscore what's being said that type of thing just make it much more interesting um, so I'm kind of liking this little track here, and this is just a, a tutorial that introduces you to recording directly into Adobe Audition and dropping in a music bed and compressing the file. Oh, I never put a limiter on this, did I? Objected. If I just vanish like Bilbo, the tail will be all over the shot. Well, here's a good point. I typically do the compression and the limiting first. But I can manipulate this entire track, and I can put a limiter on it. So I've got it highlighted here. And I'm in slot number one in effects rack. And I'm hitting the little white arrow, and I'm going to amplitude and compression. And then from there, I'm going to hard limiter. And I'm going to, the only granular control I'm going to select here is the maximum amplitude. I'm going to shut the door at minus, I'm on my keyboard, Minus 12. So now let's play. Uh, in no time. Of course you mustn't vanish, said Gandalf. That wouldn't do at all. I said soon, not instantly. Here we go. Okay, so compressed the file, limited the file. Cut, made edits, silenced sections, threw a music bed under it. Drop the music bed down at the appropriate moment. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. I, I, I don't do enough of this myself. <laughs> I'm so busy uh, that uh, my own creative uh, events don't happen as much as I wish they would. And I had a blast making this one for you. So uh, hopefully this will spur me on to do a little bit more. Uh, but you know what? Before we go, why don't we just export this? So 
again, I'm going to I'm going to save this project. So, oh, by the way, this is important. So, I pulled in that music bed. I pulled in this music bed from a different folder. It's not in with the project folder and all the folders that get created with this. So it's asking me, do you want to include that in those folders, that music bed? And I'm saying, yes, I do. So I'm hitting yes. Now that's all going to where the project file is and some other folders there and backup files and things like that. There's always more than one folder when you create a uh, Adobe Audition uh, project file, which is .sesx. And now I'm going to... Say, say I want to pass this in or say I want to publish it or put it up as a podcast or whatever. Um, now I'm going to turn it into an MP3 file. So I'm going to go into File, Export, Multitrack Mixdown. And I'm going to choose this entire s session, of course. I could choose parts of it or track or whatever, but I'm the entire session. And look, Lord of the Rings 2 underscore mix down mp3 i'm going to put this uh let's just put it in um downloads in general so it just shows up in the folder there's the file name right there there's the file format i'm going to hit save so i've got it pointed to where i want to save it um look at these sample types this is what i chose this session to be so those are all true and there it goes. Now, if I open my finder and go into downloads, there it is, mix down. So this is a baked in file. This is one audio file. If I put this back into an editor, it's one track. It's not going to separate out and look like the project file. This is what you would pass in or publish, or this would be the end result of your project. I hope that makes sense. And I'll explain that more in class too, but let's just play it for back of it. There it is. Okay, so I just noticed in playing that back that uh, at the very beginning here, I've got some noise and I think I hit the desk or something like that. So, you know, I could come back in here anytime in the future, open this project file and continue working on it. Again, I hope you liked it, and that's it for this one.